Now on Saluki Sports View, we have the profile on Mark Ionati as he continues to break school records. The men's basketball team will try to bounce back this season while the women's team tries to bounce even higher. And we talk to one Saluki athlete that's making positive changes for others. Saluki Sports View starts right now. Live from the campus of Southern Illinois University, Saluki Sports View begins right now. Welcome to Saluki Sports View, I'm Joe Fry. And I'm Sean Conway. We have an exciting show for you today, from a freshman player getting work done for SIU football, to an athletic club bringing former lacro lacrosse players together for college competition. But first, basketball season is back in Carbondale. With the regular season openers just two weeks away, sports reporter Zach Thomas has the scoop on the men's and women's basketball teams. SIU's basketball teams are attempting to shake things up in the MVC. After losing five players to transfer, men's head coach Barry Hinson is holding his head high coming into this season. My first impression without playing a basketball game is that we have better players than what we've had in the past. We no, no, no doubt and no question we have better position players than what we've had in the past. Nine seems to be a reoccurring number associated with the Dogs in 2015. Nine new players including red shirts, ninth place in the MVC a season ago, and a preseason poll predicts they'll end up ninth in the conference again this year. After the second to last finish a year ago, people are wondering, have the focus and expectations changed for this team? No, I just see it as what we got to do is just keep working hard, take, take it one game at a time, and keep, and keep doing our best, and then all, all the rest of it will take care of itself. With so many new players and coaches, returning Salukis have bigger roles as leaders and have been passing out advice to the new guys. One of the biggest things, not, not regarding my game, is just leadership, just being there for everybody else and being more, being more vocal in practices and stuff like that. A much improved 17 win season a year ago has women's head coach Cindy Stein challenging the women to be even better. As a coach, and, and I'm pretty sure our kids are, are true competitors, is the fact that they expect, they want to have the target on their backs. They don't want to be chasing anymore. They want the targets on their backs. Uh, but we also have to perform at a high level. The women's team returns all five starters and only features three new players. After a fifth place finish in the MVC last season, the players are more than hopeful that this could be their year to win 20 plus games. I'm very confident. I feel this is going to be one of the best seasons that we've had in a, in a really long time. We have a lot of passion built up, you know, with the with the um, trust in our coaching staff and you know our trainers and the team and everybody else just coming together. We can we can really do something special this year. Both teams will open their regular seasons on November 13th, with the women going on the road to DePaul and the men at home against Air Force. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Zach Thomas. The men's team will boast a new coaching staff under head coach Barry Hinson. Women's head coach Cindy Stein plans on playing all 12 girls this year, including the three freshmen. Quarterback Mark Iannotti is making history for the Salukis. He's also making plans for his future. Sports View reporter Jasmine Brown has more on the story. Playmaker Mark Iannotti has achieved many goals in his career. My goal personally is to you know leave a legacy and set a standard for you know quarterbacks and just you know every player who is going to come here and attend SIU and uh, you know and play for the football team. You know. It is no question Mark Iannotti has made a name for himself and become a record-breaking quarterback here at SIU. He's that playmaker. He's capable of uh, producing when the game's on the line, and and uh, you know that's really the true mark of a quality quarterback is coming through when when you have to. Football wasn't always Mark's first look. Yeah, I started off playing hockey. You know, I was a big hockey player with uh, me and my brother. And then one day, uh, you know, my dad was a big football player. So we literally got in the car. I thought we were going to get some ice cream or something. He literally dropped me off at the football field for tryouts. And, you know, just never looked back from there. It was just kind of a spontaneous decision. Iannotti has a total of 462 yards in all-purpose games but he does not let that impressive number get in the way of his performance. It feels good and you know, I don't want to think too much into it right now because you know, stuff like that can become a distraction. This is Iannotti's last year as a Saluki as he heads to a new chapter after college. My major is in business marketing, so I want to work for a professional sports team in like, the front office, some public relations marketing for either like, an NFL team or an NHL team. 
For Saluki Sports View, I'm Jasmine Brown. I-90 takes the field this Saturday as the Salukis go head-to-head -head against the Bison. When we return, the Saluki football team will try and use some ice to cool off North Dakota State. Indiana Price is already one of the best throwers in SIU history, but see how she plans on being even better this season. SIU football heavily recruited freshman running back Daquan Isom in the offseason. He has given the Saluki offense a big spark this year. Here's the story from Sports Review reporter Joey Dalo. Southern Illinois was the biggest player in the Daquan Isom sweepstakes. And so far, it's paying off for the Salukis. SIU co-offensive coordinator Nick Hill used to coach at Isom's high school in Orlando, Florida, and showed a strong interest in the running back. I had a couple of different offers, but um, this school, like my recruiter coach Nate, he he reached out to me harder than anybody else did. So like all my offers, they came last minute, and like it seemed like they really went interesting. Isom is an explosive football player, but he believes his feel for the game makes him special. I feel like um, I have a good vision for the game and. Electrifying as well, so both of those together made me a very good player. Former SIU running back and current running backs coach Larry Warner knows Isom isn't perfect, but he wants him to be at his best each play. You know, being a consistent blocker, being a consistent reading his keys and, and understanding an offense as a whole. Isom is an all purpose player, running, catching the ball in the backfield, and returning kicks averaging 151 all-purpose yards per game. There is no doubt Isom is fast, but he wants to be more physical back. I want to get better at um, my strength, like running other people, running defensive players over and stuff like that. Saluki quarterback Mark Iannotti sees Isom as a special player in the open field. You know, Ice is such an explosive player where, uh, you know, if we get, we just get him the ball early and it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, you know, we're going to take that nine times out of ten. Saluki football has high expectations for the high-octane true freshman. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Joey Dalo. SIU ranks number one in the Missouri Valley for total rush offense, averaging 222 yards on the ground each game. The SIU swimming and diving team will attempt to stay on track this weekend. The women's squad will try to make it three wins in a row. They have been led by senior Sherry Zhang and sophomore Bryn Hanley. Both have won Swimmer of the Week and Diver of the Week awards this month. SIU will host the Illinois Fighting Illini and Illinois State Redbirds this Saturday. The SIU cross country team is set for the MVC championships this Saturday. The team travels to Evansville, Indiana to compete against the best runners in the Missouri Valley. Senior runner Oscar Medina has the fifth best 8K time in the conference at 24 minutes and 16 seconds. According to the coaches pre-championship poll, the men's team is picked to finish sixth in conference, while the women are slated to finish in eighth. The NBC championships are this Saturday and will begin at 9.30 a.m. at the Angel Mound State Historic Site. The Salukis have had a premier throwing program in track and field over the past several years. Now they've got a thrower who has a great chance at representing her country in the Olympic Games. Saluki Sports View reporter Anthony Wilder brings us her story. Graduate student Deanna Price is slowly but surely etching her name into the SIU history books. Out of high school, she was recruited for softball along with track and field. Lucky for SIU, she was very attracted to the throwing program. I'll try to go to Southern Illinois and I'll do track and see where it goes. And, you know, it's been a good decision. <laughs> now she's a cornerstone of the program and an upperclassman to her teammates. Throwing coach J.C. Lambert says that Price is without a doubt a leader. She motivates everyone. She always talks to everybody and pushes them to their limit. You know, she's always cheering for everybody at practice, whether it's in the weight room, on the field, cheering for people on the track. You know, she wants everybody to do good. When everybody else does good, she feels good as well. She placed first at the MVC championship and second at the NCAA outdoor meet, both in hammer throw. Quite the feat for someone who missed the entire 2014 season due to injury. 
To add to those accolades, she represented the U.S. three times over the summer. Representing her school and country in major tournaments means a lot to Price. Whenever I stood up on that podium, and um, so it's going to make me tear up, the uh, national anthem came on, and I just couldn't help but start crying because it's just another, you know, another step of what I've always wanted, and you know, it, it happened. Now, as she looks forward to her final season, a few things are on the bucket list for Price. I, I really want that SIUC record. <laughs> I, I think I'm this far away from it, uh, which it's hard. Uh, right now, I'm at 72.30. The record 72.50 here, and the NCAA record is 72.90. And then after that, I'm hoping to make the Olympic team for Rio this year. It's always been a dream of mine. Qualifications for the 2016 Rio Games ends July of next year. Price will need at least a throw of 71 meters to qualify. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Anthony Wilder. Later on Saluki Sports View, the new director of track and field, Kathleen Rasky, joins us live in the studio. An SIU Athletic Club sees its membership skyrocket this fall. And he may be a menacing player on the field, but away from the gridiron, one big man has an even bigger heart. An uncommon sport in Southern Illinois has seen an increase in membership at SIU, bringing together new and experienced players. Sean Conway meets up with the lacrosse team to show us just how much they've grown this season. The SIU Lacrosse Club has made big strides in growth this season. As one of the fastest growing sports in the United States, lacrosse hasn't been in the Southern Illinois area for too long. With more members joining, the team has welcomed new and veteran players to the roster. The main thing I would talk about is just the growth over these past four years since I've been here. Um, I think we've gone up at least five kids each year, which is incredible to think about as a club program. Although the club has seen significant improvement in numbers, they still struggle with some of the fundamentals of the game. We kind of struggle with uh, we kind of struggle with passing, catching, and working the ball around. So we need to uh, you know implement a a more smooth more smooth game and try and try and get the ball moving quicker and you know just playing as a team and not just individual. With many members joining that are new to lacrosse, veteran members mentor the new guys to learning the offense. Conditioning, uh, it's hard to get college kids out here to condition. Um, we're, our offense is definitely coming together. Like I said, we have a lot of new kids, a lot of kids that just started maybe a year or two ago. So just getting them into the, the idea of playing lacrosse as a whole and how the offensive ran. The lacrosse club doesn't require a tryout or any previous experience. So how does one join the team? I talked to the president at the time, Stephen Ta. He was um, running the club, and I just basically gave him a call and asked him how the lacrosse worked, and I ended up coming out to practice and loving it ever since. The SIU lacrosse club played St. Louis University and Washington University this past Sunday. Despite losing both games, the team continues to look ahead into the season. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Sean Conway. For more information on the Saluki Lacrosse Club, visit reccenter.siu.edu. One Saluki athlete is looking past the game of football and is helping children with the game of life. Sports reporter Danny Valle has the story from the Boys and Girls Club. At 6 foot 300 pounds, this Saluki defender is an imposing presence to the players on the other side of the line of scrimmage. But inside that large frame lies a heart of gold. I'm a tutor and a mentor to the young kids. And I also teach rebound across the street that's also associated with the Boys and Girls Club. I teach a class of health education there to the young teenagers that's about to graduate and move on to college. Rayshon Golden volunteers at the Boys and Girls Club in Carbondale. He works with high school teenagers while spearheading the Saluki defense. Golden says the adjustment makes it harder to form relationships with the kids he comes across. I don't have enough time to get to really know the kids and know their names like that. So I sometimes struggle and remember their names and then after this I have to leave and go to practice and try to knock somebody's head off for a good two hours. Football is a sport he was built for, but helping others is in his blood, being the son of a social worker and a construction worker. I always knew that my mama left a good impact on people's lives and growing up I started figuring out what she did. She started telling me all you got to do is sit there, and sit there and listen and talk to somebody. And my dad helped people build houses so 
in a way, he's helping someone put a roof over their head. And I just feel that my mom and dad just, they dedicate their lives and their jobs to helping somebody. And that's how I feel that I should do. And the help is greatly appreciated according to Assistant Program Director, Sabrina Steeles. We do gym activities, snacks. I have to feed them like four or five times because they're always hungry and they always want some Cheez-Its. They love him because if they didn't like him, they would surely tell me that they didn't like him and that they don't want to be bothered with him. From what I hear, they don't say anything bad about Rayshon, so that's a plus. After his final Saluki season, Rayshon plans to keep training in hopes of making an NFL roster. But if that fails, he already has a plan in motion as well as a potential name. I want to go back home and um, open up a facility for young teens, young kids, especially young male athletes, to start training them, getting their mind right for college and the next level. One day I will want to open something like the Boys and Girls Club. We'll probably give another name like the Sunshine and Rays or something like that. If you want to become a part of something bigger, uh, come to the Boys and Girls Club, help serve the youth, like interact with them, show your interest. Um, they need it. They need to see other people outside of their own community. For Saluki Sports View, I'm Danny Valle. If you're interested in volunteering the Boys and Girls Club in Carbondale, contact Tina Carpenter at tcarpenter at bgc-cdale.org. SIU's new track and field director has some big shoes to fill. Kathleen Rasky joins us live in the studio next. And it's a busy weekend for local sports. We'll have a preview. Welcome back to Saluki Sports View. We're live in the studio with SIU's new director of track and field and cross country, Kathleen Rasky. Coach Rasky, thank you for joining us on the program tonight. Thanks for having me. And this is your first time on the program, but this is not your first time in Carbondale. You actually uh, graduated here in 1990, and you are a Saluki Hall of Famer as of 1997. So I guess the real question is, what made you decide to come back to SIU? I think it started with a phone call I got from Tommy Bell, our athletic director, and uh, he just was tremendous in his approach in uh, inviting me back and to take a look at the program and the position. Um, I've always been a proud Saluki, and uh, it was something that I definitely wanted to look at. Take us through the interview process. What, what was the uh, procedure? What, what, what came, how did the decision come to be? Well, the decision um, was fairly easy um, after having been on campus for the interview after 16 years not being on campus. And so um, the sense of community, um, the approach that Tommy had, and uh, just the connection that I had with all of um, the, the people that I ran into, um, just the, the, the tremendous uh, support for track and field here was um, something that I just couldn't pass up. Now, you're replacing uh, Connie Price-Smith, and for those who don't know Connie Price-Smith, she is a six-time MVC champion. Uh, she gave them titles, uh, six-time coach of the year for the MVC, and she coached eight national champions, and she will coach the track and field team for Team USA in 2016 Olympic Games. Do you have big shoes to fill? Do you find that any sort in any way intimidating? No, not at all. Connie and I were actually teammates. So uh, we, we've known each other for a lot of years, and... Um, you know, SIU Track and Field has such a great history, um, obviously a proven history. My job is to continue to make Saluki Track and Field its best, and um, Connie did a great job while she was here, and uh, I know that all the resources here, the type of student athletes that we're going to recruit to our program, we're going to continue on with the rich tradition of track and field. Did she speak to you after your hiring? Oh yeah, we, we, uh, we had coffee for about three hours when I was down and w we remain really good friends. Now, what do you feel is the strongest event on the team right now? Definitely our throwers, uh, but we have an excellent jump squad right now too. So the jumps and the throws really are our, our two strongest areas. Now, for those that don't know you, you were at Sacramento State uh, from 2002 to, or 2003 to 2015. You won a slew of titles. What is, what is your formula for a winning program? I believe that a winning program needs to have um, a, a true sense of team. 
and our approach to Division One track and field is to create a true sense of team. So it starts with a connection to each other because when we go into fighting for a team title together, we have to feel like a team and act like a team. And it can't be foreign to them. So we build the team throughout the year. The other thing that we find um, is the competitiveness of the student athlete. It has to be there. Um, a trademark of the programs that I've always run is that we compete at our best when it counts the most. So between um, the sense of team and competing at our best when it counts the most really makes for a successful team and to vie for a team title every year. One last thing before we let you go. Uh, you have the cross country MVC championships this weekend. What do you expect from the men and the women in Terre Haute? Well, number one, I expect that they compete at their best because it does count the most this weekend. Um, we have two great leaders in Oscar and, and uh, Krista, and we expect their best performance of the season thus far. Um, and uh, we're certainly hoping uh, that the, the, the team comes together and um, my men's team probably um, we're hoping for a, a podium finish and my men's team or my women's team hopefully will will be better than we're ranked going in. It's been a pleasure having you here in the studio. Thank you a lot, Coach Rasky. Thanks for having me. We'll be back with the Saluki weekend schedule as four-time national champion North Dakota State comes to Carbondale. You won't want to miss this. Here's your weekend schedule for SIU Athletics. First, the Saluki football squad hosts the North Dakota State Bison at Saluki Stadium this Halloween. It's also Military Appreciation Day. All current or former military service men and women will receive free admission. The SIU volleyball team travels to Chicago to take on the Loyola Ramblers tomorrow night in Central Illinois. To take on the Bradley Braves Saturday night. The swimming and diving team hosts the Fighting Illini for the Redbirds of Illinois State. And for an all, Illinois all do meet this Saturday, and the women's basketball team starts their preseason matchup against the Maryville Saints tomorrow night. Thank you for joining us tonight. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at River Region News. I'm Joe Fry. And I'm Sean Conway. For Danny Valle and more than 100 students on Sports View and Evening Edition, good night.